In this video, we will show you how to replace your lower control arm. Let's get started. Okay friends, it's time to get started on our job. The first thing you need to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheel's off the ground. Make sure you have the suspension hanging. After that, you're gonna remove all five of your 19 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. Let's move along to removing our axle nut. To remove this nut, use a 32 millimeter socket. Use a hammer and punch, come right in the center of that axle and drive it out of the wheel bearing. We only wanna break it free. The next thing you wanna do is move along to your lower ball joint. On these, you're gonna find you have a locking cotter pin. Go ahead and remove it. And then we'll remove our 22 millimeter ball joint nut. Leave that on there a couple threads. Now we're gonna move along to breaking the lower control arm free from the lower ball joint. To do this, you wanna be extremely careful not to damage your lower ball joint. Some people will try to use a pickle fork and come in between this area, but you could potentially damage the boot. I'll continue by using a hammer, give it a couple loving bonks along here. Once you have it broken free, continue on with a pry bar and lower the lower control arm off of the ball joint. Now let's follow that control arm to where it connects onto the subframe. You'll find that you have an 18 millimeter headed bolt that goes through from the front, through the control arm, and then through the back side over on the subframe as well. On that far side, you'll have to use a 21 millimeter wrench to hold the nut still. There's my nut. Once you have this bolt loose, leave it in here just a little bit. We'll continue on to our two rearward bolts as well. Let's start removing each of these bolts. We'll start with the outboard bolt. For this one, we'll use a 15 millimeter to remove the bolt side and use an 18 millimeter to hold the nut along the top. Move along to your inboard bolt. You'll find that you have a 21 millimeter headed bolt that makes its way from the bottom to the top. On the top side, use a 24 millimeter socket to hold the nut still. Now we can continue removing our forward bolt. To do this, you'll find that when it comes out, it hits up against the transmission pan. We're gonna have to apply a little bit of pressure underneath the transmission. Pressing it up should make it so the bolt can just barely slide right out of there. When you do it, be extremely careful not to damage your transmission pan. Continue on with a pry bar. We're gonna come in between the subframe and the control arm and gently start to separate this. As we do, be extremely careful along this side to make sure that the control arm does not damage your ball joint. There it is, friends. Now it's time to install our brand new lower control arm. Let's take this and slide it into position. Once you have that in place, continue on by safely raising your transmission again. We'll 
We'll get our nut on there. We're only gonna start this on, and then we'll continue on with our two rearward bolts. With that one started, we'll move along. Put in that bolt with its mounting nut on top. Time for the larger bolt. Before you continue tightening the mounting bolts that hold the control arm to the subframe, we're going to continue on over at the lower ball joint. Pull down on that lower control arm, start the ball joint into it and put on the mounting nut. Now let's put some upward pressure on the lower control arm. Be extremely careful when you do this because you'll notice that this is curved along here and you don't want your jack to go sliding and potentially shift the vehicle. We need to lift this up so it's essentially in ride height position, putting load on the control arm. At that point, we can continue on by tightening up our mounting bolts. Once you have that supported, continue on by snugging your forward bolt. Once it's snug, torque it to 140 foot-pounds. Now we'll snug each of the rearward bolts. Torque the smaller bolt to 74 foot-pounds. Now torque the larger bolt to 178 foot-pounds. Remove your support. Move along to your lower ball joint nut. Snug this and then torque it to 111 foot-pounds. Once you have the ball joint nut torqued, you wanna to pay attention to the nut itself. You'll find that it has a whole bunch of slots making its way around. You wanna line up those slots with the hole in the stud. If for some reason it's not lined up, continue tightening until the very next slot is. Once you have it lined up, continue on with a locking cotter pin. The next thing you need to do is put on the axle nut. This is going to be easiest with the vehicle close to the ground. You'll notice that I used a flat pry bar coming across the lug studs, being extremely careful not to damage them in any way. That's to prevent this from spinning while I try to tighten the axle nut. Now, when you tighten the axle nut, you need to make sure that you do it by hand. You can use a ratchet and your 32 millimeter socket, snug it up, and then we're gonna torque it. Okay, friends, now we can reinstall our wheel. Once you have it in place, continue on by putting all five of your 19 millimeter lug nuts on. Once they're started, bottom them out. We'll get the wheel safely back on the ground and then torque them to 100 foot pounds. Torqued. Okay friends, we showed you how to install your front lower control arm. At this point, you wanna take your vehicle for a road test. Make sure you don't hear any funny noises and get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. 
Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.